don't owe me anything. I'm just here for more of you. Amen. 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 I want to come down here and be personal with y'all. Amen. How many of you have faced a situation where you felt hopeless? Yes, sir. Amen. You felt like worthless. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. Emptiness. Any of that, in any way you want to spin that, you felt like you would never get up, felt like your hands were low stones, like you couldn't even raise them up in prayer. You ever felt like that? Yeah. You ever felt like your prayers bounced off the ceiling? Yeah. You ever felt like God himself didn't want nothing to do with you? That's right. Mm -hmm. Felt like that? Let's talk about this for a minute. Uh, I didn't have her put this up here tonight, but so you're going to look it up. I always put it up there, but we're going to have some class participation tonight. Amen. Amen. We're going back old school, Jerry. I'm actually making you open the Bible and turn the page. Yeah. Why? Because if you read it, you look it up, you'll remember it. Yes. Right? Yeah. And this is important. I don't mind doing that, but every now and then, you need to do it. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30. Verse 17, this is what I'm talking to you tonight, healing for today. Now, you read through the Bible, Jerry, you read where God has done miraculous things throughout the history of time, but some believe that those things stopped with the apostles. Did you know that? Yeah. That's actual a biblical teaching that's out there, yeah. that it stopped with the apostles. Yep. I'm here to tell you, that's hogwash. God still heals today. Amen. God still moves today. Amen. God still touches today. Amen. Right? Uh, how do you know that, Pastor Mike? Everybody in this building, you see me? You're looking at it. Amen. Right? You're looking at it. I know what God can do. I know what he's able to do. Amen. And that's why I will preach it. I'll proclaim it because you come too late to tell me that he can't do it. Amen. I know for a fact he can because he's done it for me. Right? Amen. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. What does it say? For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. I'm going to stop right there. That's the essence of this message. Uh -huh. What is it? I will heal thee. I will restore thee, and I'll heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Anyone familiar with Jesus and his ministry in the New Testament? You read through it. Uh, everybody that's familiar with that knows that he did not withhold his power to heal. Right? It was manifest. Okay? In fact, the many miracles that he publicly performed were proof of his promise to overcome. Right? Right? Uh, on his own excruciating journey toward the cross and the journey toward the resurrection, he suffered all forms of affliction. Did he not? Yes. Similar to those he healed for others. He suffered them. Right? That's why it gave him the authority to say, by my stripes, Amen. you are healed. Amen. Amen. Right? That's what gave him the authority is because he bore it. He was an outcast, made lame, bleeding, and was even taken for a time by death, although willingly. No one took his life. He laid down his life. If you notice on the cross, when everybody else would have already been dead, matter of fact, they were. He was the only one left. It was not going to happen until he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Amen. Nobody could kill him. Nobody could take him. He voluntarily laid down his life and took it and bore it. For what reason? To give us the hope and to give us the promise yes. of healing. Amen. Right? 
because he said emphatically, I have overcome. Amen. Yes. Right? Yes. When he went into hell and he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, he took all authority. Yes. Amen. Hmm. Did you know that even to this day, you breathing right here, do you know death has to ask for permission to take you? Yes, sir. It cannot take you voluntarily because he said, I am the giver and the taker of life. Amen. Amen. Right? Death cannot even invade without his permission. Hmm. That's good stuff. But because we know Jesus is God made flesh, we can hear him speaking to us from the very beginning. Can you or can you not? Amen. We can go as far back as Exodus. All the way back to there. Exodus 15, if you want to know where it's at. Where he referred to as Jehovah Rapha. What is that? That's the God that heals. That heals. Who heals? Jehovah Rapha. If you want to know that. Jesus desires. Listen. Jesus desires that we believe even today. Even today. That bringing him into our struggles. Our trials. Our, our issues of life. Our wounds or our sins can generate. Guess what? Healing and hope. Amen. That's where it lies. If everything was rosy all the time. Why would you pray? Amen. Right? right? Yes. If you never got sick. Why That's would right. you pray? That's right. That's right. You take some. I, I've been there. I've, la, I've been laying on my back in ICU knowing what it's like. My next breath's not guaranteed. I could die right now. Right? I know that feeling. I know what it's like. And guess what? Like I told you this morning, those issues, your circumstance will pressure you to pray. Right? Amen. I, you know, I'll, I'll throw it out there. I'm not too proud to say, did I pray heavily at that time? I probably prayed more then than I have in my lifetime. That's right. Why? Because I knew what the reality was. Right? And my prayer was this. Somebody says, you're a pastor. I'm as human as you are. Right? Amen. Here's the thing. One thing that I prayed was this. God, I don't want to die. But if I do, I've got to know that the next thing I see will be your face. Here was the last part of that prayer. God, if there's anything in my life that will separate me from you, take care of it now. Right? Why? Because your circumstance will pressure you to prayer. Amen. Right? That's right. There you go. But he comes in and says, I will heal thee of thy wounds. Now, listen. For you theological people that preach that garbage, that it stopped with the apostles, you are calling the word of God a lie. Amen. It's that simple. I can't put it any other way. I'm not trying to be mean, but that's a fact. Right? Because you go on into the New Testament, and it says what? Go out to the highways, the hedges, compel them to come in and all that. And then it also says, Jerry, that you would lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Amen. Right? So are you calling the synoptic gospels a lie? It's all through. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's all through there. Right? So if you say that that's not for now, you are calling God a liar. I don't want to be in that position. I don't want to be in those shoes. I'm going to look, Jerry, I'm going to take this book and I'm going to say, I take it for what it says boldly from cover to cover. Amen. Right? I declare that it is the truth. It's the almighty, inerrant word of God. It's unpolluted. It's actual fact. Right? The, everything in this book, Jerry, is God-inspired and Holy Ghost breathed. Amen. Amen. Right? So I will take it for what it says. If he said I will, what fool would say they'd rather be sick than to know that there's a God that can touch them right on the spot? Who would say that? Why would you? 
Why would you waste your time to even walk in the door? Why would you waste your time to prepare to come to church? Why would you even go through the formalities of what we did tonight if you didn't believe it for 100% for what it said? Amen. Right? Because I tell you, why do I stand where I stand? Why do I stand on? Because I don't know anything else. There's no other solid foundation. Everything else will fail. But the word of God is absolute. And it will be standing when this thing is over. Amen. It's the only thing. He said my word will always stand. Amen. Right? Amen. This is the word that we're convicted by. Right? It's the word that compels us. It's the word that washes us. Right? So... We better hold on to it. Hold on to what we know, right? Jesus desires that we believe it even today. Bring it. Bring your struggles, your wounds, your sins, everything. His healing may not look the way we want it to. Are you listening? Or actually, you know, actualize within our own agenda and our own time frame. It may not operate like that. But his power to heal is both true, miraculous, and absolute. Even today. Amen. Right? Yes, Lord. Say yes. yes. Because it's true. Yes. So I want to give you some things tonight. Let's consider. I'm going to give you five different things. Okay? And I'm, we're going to consider these that God still heals. Tonight. Amen. So if you need a healing touch. Tina. Jerry. Me. Me. You. Let's just say everybody in this room. Amen. If you're here tonight, nobody I said, so. how do you know that, Pastor? Because I wouldn't be compelled to preach this message if there wasn't people in this room to hear. Right? So it will encompass everybody in here. Everybody in here, there's something in this sermon for you. All right? I guarantee it. If it's not, tell me after church. And I was like, well, sorry. Take it up to him. <laughs> But I am absolutely confident, 100%, that everybody in this room will be touched by this word. Amen. All right? Amen. Number one, and this is a big one, Jesus heals loneliness. Amen. You ever felt lonely? Yeah. You ever felt isolated? Yes. You ever felt like nobody wanted to be around you? Yeah. Pastor a church. Huh. You'll feel that way. There's always somebody coming at you. Always somebody wanting to do something, right? Mm -hmm. Stories of Jesus' miraculous healings, they're record, listen, they are recorded 22 times in the Synoptic Gospels. 22 times. A majority of these miracles, they show Jesus ministering to the marginalized. That's who he came for. Uh, for the religious elite, guess what? He did not come for you. He That's did right. not come for the kings. That's right. That's he right. did not come for the wealthy. That's right. There you go. He did not come for the popular. Mm -hmm. If you want to find Jesus, guess where he was? You'll find him talking to a prostitute. Yep. Amen. Mm -hmm. You'll find him talking to a beggar. Mm -hmm. You'll find him talking to the lame. Yes, Lord. To the sick. Come on. To the poor. That's right. Why? Because he knows what it's like to be an outcast. Mm -hmm. He knows how you feel because he had to come as that purpose to touch what nobody else would. Yes, sir. Kings can demand. Jesus did it voluntarily. Amen. Amen. Right? Yep. He came to be a servant. Amen. He did not come with pomp and circumstance to say, I'm the son of God, hear me roar. He didn't come in like that. Mm -hmm. He came in like a lamb. That's right. But he was meek and lowly. Why? Because he was giving us the example. If you don't have the heart of a servant, 
you can't be in my kingdom. That's right. Those those are pretty strong. That's a pretty strong point, but it's the back, mm -hmm. right? Yes, it is. If we can't serve, here's another thing: if you're not willing to serve, you have no business on this pulpit. That's right. Amen. You have no. You can't be a leader if you're not willing to serve. That's right. Right? Yep. Why? Because you have to have the heart of a servant. Yes, sir. Right? Before I pastor up here, guess what? I've done everything there is to do in a, in a church or music or and I've cleaned, I've swept, I've done the toilets. I've done that stuff in my service here. Yeah, go out there. It, but the point for that is if you're not willing to serve, you can't lead. That's right. Amen. Right? Amen. right? Yeah. But too many people say, put me here, put me there. I've had, as a, I want to do this, I want to do that. How dependent are they? Right? right? Are you going to fulfill that role? I can't, countless times people just walked out and did their thing and whatever, dropped it in your lap. That's not the heart of a servant. That's, not. That's selfish. Yes. Right? Yes, we can't be that way. We have to have the heart of a servant. You with me? Jesus heals loneliness. In these healing accounts that we talked about where he touches the unclean or he converses with the outsider. You always found him doing that. Yes. Did you not? Yes. He is showing us that rejection is harmful. That's not the way of GBC. I don't care who walks through the door. I don't care if they're drunk. I don't care if they stink. Right. I don't care what they're wearing. I don't care what they look like. If they walk through yes, that door, Lord. we treat them just like Amen. you do. Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. Amen. Why? Because that's what he did. That's right. And we're supposed to be Christ-like. Right. We're supposed to be emulating that, right? Because if you can't love them, you can't love him. Right. <laughs> yes, you love him. Yes. If you can't love them, you can't love him. Yes. Right? Yes. right? right. Mm -hmm. mm, that's good stuff. That's good stuff right there, Pastor. Thank you. <laughs> He's showing us rejection is harmful. And his way is restorative. Yes. Do you know how somebody is not in the will of God or spirit of God? Do you know how? Well, here's a good indicator. If they are tearing down somebody, they are acting as a satanic puppet. That's right. If you tear down your fellow member of the church, fellow brother, fellow sister, Amen. I don't care who they are, I don't even care what they did. If Amen. you tear them down, you are a puppet of the devil. Amen. For this reason, it's called conquer and divide. Mm -hmm. yep. If I can divide you, I can conquer you. That's right. Right? But God's will is for to come in unity, yes. in one mind, one, yes, one accord, Amen. one spirit. Mm -hmm. If we operate outside of that, it is not the will of God. That's right. Amen. That is biblical 100%, and I can back that up. Mm -hmm. Right? But guess what? <laughs> In these accounts, it's evident that even when people were shunned or they ridiculed, guess what? Jesus stands with them. Amen. He stood with them, loving them, touching them, being their life. And although we can't see God in the flesh here as the persons of Jesus right now, he sent the Holy Ghost. That's right. right? Why? That intercedes for you and me. That's that intercessor. How many times have you went to pray and you didn't even have the words to pray because you were so out, you yeah. were so destitute, you were so barren yeah. that you did not even know how to pray? That's right. You didn't. You've been in church. I've been there, so I know you've been there. Yeah. You went to pray and you could, you didn't even have the words to pray. All of a sudden, here comes the Holy Ghost, and it comes in. The Bible says that it will intercede with groanings. Amen. Did you know that? 
What is it? That's that comforter that comes in the Holy Ghost that says, you know what? Since you are in a place where you can't even stand, lay down. Just sit there and I'll do it for you. I'll pray on your behalf. I'll intercede on your behalf because I have to keep the promise that I will not leave you. Right? There you go. Good work. His presence is palatable. Did you know that? When we seek his guidance, when we seek his direction, he will always keep us on course. Amen. Right? Because when you veer off course, guess what? The Holy Ghost kind of kicks you. You ever been kicked by the Lord? Yeah, Lord. Jerry, you ever been kicked by God? I have. It hurts. Then I have to go, ouch, and get back on course. Right? Because he said the steps of the righteous man are ordered. So if you keep walking in those steps, guess what? That's his guidance. Right? Mm, that's good stuff right there. In fact, one of God's most abiding messages is that you are not alone. Did you know that? Isaiah 41.10 puts it this way. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea. I will help thee, yea. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. Mm. I, you know what? Those jokers that just say that, that ain't true, you can believe whatever you want. I'm going to believe that. Why? Because that's to my benefit. Right? I will help thee. Because, see, I can get in a position, you can get in a position where nobody else can help you. They can't be there for you in that. But he said, I will be there in that right early. Which, you know what that means? That means I'm there before it even happened. Right? I'm ahead of schedule. I'm there before you get there. I was there before your circumstance arrived. And since I already knew about it, you don't have to worry about it. Because I'm going to be there to lift you up. When nobody else will lift you up. You ever been in a place where you felt like everybody was against you? Right? I've been there. Right? What do, what do you do? And you sit down, I've set that office in my chair, and I said, God, why am I even doing this? Everybody's got something to say. Everybody's got to know why. And he says, Michael, shut up. And I say, okay. Right? Why? Because go back to my promise. I am with thee. Do not be dismayed. Don't worry about what they say. Don't worry about what they do. Because here's what you need to do. Do not fear anybody that can harm your body. Fear the one that can harm the body and the soul. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Mm, that's deep, but it's true. Because I, you know what we do every time that we do that and we say we have our little pity parties, Jerry, and we say, mm, I, I just can't hold on. I, and I hate this because I've had teachers, I've had sound people, I've, they, and I, this goes through me like nothing. Why? Every time that we say it's not worth it, I'm going somewhere else, I'm doing it. Every time that we put it back on ourselves, you and I are putting him back on this cross. Yeah. And we're saying, what you did for me is not worth it. It's not worth my feelings or my agenda or my time or what I want to do. What I want to do, my opinion, my thought process is more important than what you called to do. And we collectively as a body got to get in that spirit. And say, you know what? I don't care how I feel. I don't care... How they talked about me. I don't care what they've done. You know what? I just want to come in and be in one accord. Because every time I read about it, Jerry, when the church comes in one mind, one accord, guess what happens? It creates a spontaneous combustible reaction. And something takes place. Right? You can tell the difference. Even spiritually. 
If you're paying attention, if you're in the spirit, you can tell the difference when you come in this church or any church and people are not prayed up and ready for it. You can tell the difference. You can tell if somebody just came out of their obligation or whatever. But I'll tell you what the difference is. You just seen it a couple weeks ago. The night with Peggy. What was different? From the time the first note was sung by the praise team, there was something different in the house. Why? Because there was a remnant in here that said, you know what? I'm, I'm not here for the pettiness. I'm not here for the gossip. I'm not here for who's here. I'm here because I need a touch of your anointing. I need a touch of your power. And I know who you are. And there were some Jacobs that showed up in the house that said, no, I didn't come for any other reason. But I'm not leaving this place until all of heaven falls. And I seek your face. And I see your power. And I've got to have it, and I'm not taking nothing less, and I will not take no for an answer. Amen. Amen. Oh, there's a difference, yes. right? Hmm. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made complete. What are you talking about? First John four twelve. What's it say? No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us. And his love is perfected in us. If you don't love somebody, you got a problem. A big problem. You have a God problem. And that's a problem you don't want. Right? right. Because here's what's going to happen. There's coming a time that one that you hate you're going to have to walk up and put your arms around them and tell them you love them. Yes, you will. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that stings, don't it? Yep. That hurts. Yes. But it's going to happen. Yes, it is. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Have you had to do it? Yep. <laughs> you were there. <laughs> Did I have to do it? Yep. There's just one individual. For 10 years, we went at it toe to toe. Couldn't stand this person. Me personally. Up, I can tell you now because none of you know who it is but one person. So, shut up. <laughs> right? H hated this person. Guess what? I had to. I was preaching in a service and I had to do it publicly. You talk about stinging. It ain't just coming up private to hang. I had to do it from here. You were, was you, you were there. Did I, did I want to do that? Not really. Probably not. But what was it? Because something I said hit like a brick and said this. If you can't do it, you can't preach it. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. <sighs> <sighs> I didn't have time to like, nope, God, I'm not doing it. I'm standing in front of, I don't know, 100 people at the time. What are you going to do? What you're told. God said, now. I said, God, there's a lot of people here. I don't want to do it. Now. 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 So I looked that direction reluctantly. <laughs> I looked that direction. I looked at this individual and I told them publicly, I'm sorry. And I love you. That's one of the hardest things as a human that you have to do. Because you don't want to say you were wrong. No Amen. matter what, right? And then it came to the point whether I was right or wrong, whatever the reasons for my feelings were, heck, matters not to me. It matters not because the word says it, right? Mm -hmm. Don't care what the situation is, but you got to do it, right? But you know what? After that moment, my life went a little bit better simply because I was freed from that. That's yes. right. It no longer held me captive. That's right. 
right? So that's how it works. You got to love. You got to love. There's a different, you can love somebody to hell too. Did you know that? You can. Uh, I got to get off that. When any of us feels the pain and loneliness, we can come to the well and fill up on his strength and his promise and his presence. And tonight you're drinking from the well. The water of life. Right? I'll drink from this well. Right? And that's good stuff. Then we can live in light, letting someone else know that they're also not alone. Right? right. Isaiah 30, 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. When ye turn into the right hand, and when ye turn to the left. Did you catch that? You can tell somebody else. They're not alone. Matter of fact, if you're not exemplifying it, they ought to see it in you. Lord, when people look at me, let them see you. Amen. Right? Because I'm part of the family. Right? I don't want to be that one, you know, in every family, and you know this is true, I'm not, not, everybody in here agree with me, I know you will. In your family, there's one person that is nothing but a problem. I don't care what they do. Every, if they open their mouth, it's a problem. Right? They, drama, they're nothing but drama. Right? Everybody in here has got the Thanksgiving, Christmas dinner where that one individual, you hope they don't come this year. Right? We all have seen it. We've all been there. But guess what? That's the person that ought to see Jesus in you. Right? Because that's who he came for. He came for the destitute. He came for the sick. He came for the lame. He came for the disenfranchised. That's who he came for. Right? Number two. Jesus heals the sickness of sin. Yes. Amen. Jesus' primary passion, what is it? Is to restore us in a right relationship with God. If, that, if you can't get that, you don't get nothing else. You have to get that right there, right? Mm -hmm. When he heals the paralyzed man in Luke chapter 4, he completes his message by assuring him, your sins are forgiven. He couldn't heal him until he saved him. Think about that. The spiritual healing is our sin patterns reconciles us with the creator. Even today. Salvation reconciles you with God. Right? And Jesus literally has power to cast out devils, demons. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. It's there. We see it in Mark 5 and Mark 9. Uh, you may have seen this in your own life if you've ever prayed for someone who was trapped in some type of sin to be set free from it. Or maybe that someone was you. Correct? Everybody in here had to be free of something. Right? Uh, let's just get down to brass tacks. I can do that because it's a laid back service, right? Let's just get real with people. Everybody in here has something that you battle. Something that you deal with. Yes. Something. Paul said he had a thorn in the flesh. Everybody in this room, you've got a thorn in the flesh. Yes, what is it? You know, it could be a litany of things. Some people have problems with what they watch. What, getting into conversations they shouldn't be in. Stealing. Lying. Uh, anything you want to throw in there. But I can assure you, that everybody in the church house has that issue. Amen. So that gives me the right to say this. Don't tear down somebody else when you got cracks in your bricks. Amen. Don't try to tear down somebody else's house when you got mortar and bricks that are cracked yourself. That's called hypocritical. Mm -hmm. yes. 
Right? Lift them up. Pray for them. Amen. Right? Are you with me? Yes. Is this okay? Yes. I know this is hard to swallow, but hey, we'll get through it, all right? Did you hear this all right? Okay, just checking. Make sure it conforms to the bylaws. We all know the bylaws, amen? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Amen. Now, guess what? In uh, 1 Peter 2.24, right there, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins, should live under righteousness by whose stripes we were ye were healed. There it is again. That's that's the third time I've seen that in the Word of God, right? So guess what? By his wounds, you are healed. Amen. You are healed. Yes. Decree it. Speak the word to it. Yeah, that's what I say. When you pray, just don't make up words, speak the word. Yeah. Speak the word. When you pray, speak the word. Why? Because he has to honor the contract. That's right. right? You know how I would tell you the best way to pray is this. God, according to your word, you said that on that cross, by your stripes, I am healed. Yes. You have the power and the authority to heal me of this infirmity, to heal me of this ailment, to heal my body. You said that you would bear witness uh, and you would restore my wounds. Uh, you would heal me in that right. God, this is what your word says and your word cannot lie. Yes, amen. The best way to pray? Speak the word. Amen. That all right? Yes. yes. When a woman bleeding for 12 long years longs to just touch the edge of the hem of his garment, guess what happens? Knowing she would be healed. Did you catch my words there? She did it knowing she would be healed. Not wishing. Not hoping that it might happen. She went there with an emphatic mindset that said, I know for a fact, if I can just touch him, I will be healed. Amen. It's time that the people of God, we start pressing ourselves. You better get to pressing. Get to pressing. Why? Because if I can just get to him, I know it's going to take place. Stop murmuring. Stop whining. Stop complaining. Stop finding fault with everybody else. And look to him and say, if I can just touch him. Amen, Lord. You with me? Yes. Hmm. This illustrates the spiritual healing available today through faith to me and you. For any obstacle that we are facing. Right? It's a picture of how you can turn to him and believe that your sin, sick soul, or your body will be healed, will be renewed, will be restored. Yes? Mm, that's good stuff. Like Jarius' daughter, what did he say? Daughter, arise, is immediate. They didn't have to think about it. He did not have to ask the board. Matter of fact, if you want to know the truth of that, that story, what did he do? He took Peter, James, John, and the parents of that child, right? Everybody else, he said, kick rocks. That's right. Why? Somebody said, do you believe in putting people out of the church? Jesus did. <laughs> right? Why? Because... Uh, because I came on a mission and you're going to mess up that mission because you're full of doubt, fear, and unbelief. And since you have those things, don't even get in my way. Go home. Go somewhere else because I came here to get the job done. And he took those people because he knew they had the faith to stand. Amen. Right? That's why some people do walk away. It's because they cannot stand where you stand. They don't have the same fervor or tenacity to walk the road that you've got to walk. And here's the thing. When that happens, let them go. Amen. Amen. 
Right? Why? Because just like that, I need these people. I need this to get done. Say yes. 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 Alright. Guess what? Then the other one. What's he say? Jesus responded. Your faith has made you whole. You could take that a little far because the word says, as your faith is, so be it unto you. I could stop right there and that's enough. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. hmm. Jesus offers forgiveness of our sins. He invites us to sin no more. And although we will never be without the propensity for sin, because we will, we are given the freedom through Christ's redemption. You agree with that? Mm -hmm. Why? Why do we do that? It's to forego the dangerous habits and paths that we have been healed from. Mm -hmm. Right? And if you've been healed from it, why return to it? Ooh. Ooh. Y'all do what you want with that. It's free. <laughs> First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So Jesus heals the sickness of sin. Number three, Jesus heals physical ailments. Amen. You ever had one? Yeah. You ever had a physical ailment? Oh, yeah. It's tempting to read about Jesus healing Jairus' daughter, renewing a man's withered hand, giving sight back to the blind, or healing Malchus, uh, his ear, after it had been cut off. You know who did that? Peter. Peter, Yes. And believe that we can direct Jesus' power to heal our physical ailments too. It's easy to do that. The truth to embrace about Jesus' ability to heal physical ailments today. I'm talking about right here, right now, today. Is that we, me and you are complex. And we make it that way. When it's very simple. It's very simplistic. Because we look at the natural and we think how in the world this person has cancer. It's a death sentence. It's nothing more than a common cold to God. Amen. Right? Mm, this is good stuff. I'm telling you, you need to grab this. Integrated beings, that's what we are. We're complex, integrated beings. Created by a God who sees infinitely before and beyond our limitations. Because we don't have the intellect to even fathom what God will do. It's in the book. We read it. It's good for them. Will he do it for me? Whatever we battle, he's making right in his timing and in his way while it's powerful, sustained ability, su sustenance, if, I, if you will. Guess what? Pray for it. Pray for healing. Amen. We welcome, I do, welcome you to trust that. Why? Because here's the thing. Don't just pray for the healing. Pray specifically for what you're wanting. Amen. Because the word says, Jerry, that I have the right to approach the throne of grace and mercy and make my petition known with boldness. That's what the word says, right? So that means I don't have to Mickey Mouse this thing. God, this is the order. This is the prognosis that was given. God, I don't understand it. I don't even know nothing about it. Don't know how it happened. But God, one thing I do know is you are Jehovah Rapha, my healer. You are Je mm. You are the one that heals me. You're the one that sustains me. God, you spoke it. I can walk right up to it and say, cancer, I decree in the name of Jesus that your bars of bondage hold me captive no longer because I am blood bought by the Spirit. We have that right. We have that ability. Right? Amen. How do I know that? Because I know people it's happened to. I know people that was told, get your affairs in order. That's You're right. going to die. 15, 17, 18 years later, 20 years later, they're still alive. Amen. Amen. Why? Because God is not bound to the situation. 
He's the one that can speak, and it's done. Right? That's good stuff. Right? Whether the physical issues you're experiencing today, whether they go away or not, Jesus invites us to trust that he uses them for his glory. There's a purpose for your pain. There's a purpose for your ailment. Right? What's the, what's the purpose? One, he gets the glory. Two, it keeps you on track. Why? You ever notice when everything's perfect within your body, it's easier to sway different directions? Yeah. You ever notice that? Yep. That's right. But when you're holding on to a promise, it keeps you standing in line. Uh -huh. Yep. You see that? Mm. That's good stuff right there. I won't even charge you for that. <laughs> Okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We may grieve over the loss of our own ability. You know, our grief as we walk through loved ones through an illness. I've been there. I watched my mom go 10 months with ovarian cancer. A death sentence that was given to her. I watched for 10 months as her body failed. Did I like it? No, I hated it. I know what it's like to stand there. Hear them breathing in pain, and there's nothing you can do about it. The only thing that you can say is, God has perfect timing. God is in time, on time, every time. That's the only promise I can give. I know what it's like to walk up to a parent's casket and realize I'll never speak to mom or dad again for a while. That's right. Right? I remember walking up to mommy's casket and I told her I bent down and I kissed her on the forehead and I said, Mommy, I'll see you soon. <coughs> Why? Because that's the hope. That's what sustains us. Yeah. Right? Is knowing I'll see you again. But we know what it's like to grieve. It hurts. I got to do a funeral this Thursday. We sorrow but we don't sorrow as those that don't have a hope. That's right. Right. Amen. Right? When I walked up to mommy and daddy's casket, yes, it hurt. Yes, I cried. Yes, it felt like somebody reached and pulled my guts out. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. But the one thing that I could walk away from that when they closed the lid on that casket is knowing it's only temporary. Right. It's only temporary. Right? But he knows what it was like to grieve. Oh, yes. That's how he gives us the ability and the, to sustain us. How do you know Jesus grieved? Shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. Right? When he heard when, of, of Lazarus. That was his friend. He felt the same thing you and I felt. Right? He had to because... I, you've heard me say this before. You cannot be a kinsman redeemer unless you're bonded with them. Unless you know them. I can't redeem you of something that I don't know what it feels like. Amen. That's why he said he bore our sorrows. Mm, that's good stuff right there. Is it not? One of the best ways to recognize Jesus' power to heal our physical ailments is by honoring him when he does. Amen. I feel better today. Well, that's great that you feel better. You feel better because the hand of God moved. And the Bible says, what? You are made an overcomer by the word of your testimony. Yes. Right? You are made more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Right? So if God has moved on your behalf, it would behoove you. Tell somebody about it. Amen. Honor him. Because you don't know who it's going to affect. That's right. 
You don't know where somebody else is standing. They may need the same thing you got. The same. Amen. And all of a sudden you say, listen, I can agree with you in belief because he's done it for me. And he said he's That's no right. respecter of persons. What means what he did for Elijah, what he did for Abraham, yes. what he did for yes, Paul, Lord. what he did for this one or that one, That's what right. he's done for you, he can do for you too. Amen. Amen. Right? Yes, sir. Mm. Yes. Even in the little things, give him credit for it. That headache that eased when you focus on his majesty. Yes. Somebody said, oh, well, it just went away. It didn't just go away. Things don't do that. It went away for a reason. Right? Mm -hmm. If you pray. Why waste your time to pray for something if you don't believe That's it's going right. to take place? Right? Yeah. right? Yeah. Believe that God is going to do it, yes. and he will. Right? Yeah. right? Good stuff. Yes. The mind-blowing design of his creation to heal what's under your bandage while you sleep. I've seen it happen. I've seen sores disappear by morning. Yep. I personally know an individual who had cancer on their lip. You know them. They went in to pray, Brother Clem, for some of you that don't know. He went in and faith believing, looked in the mirror, and he spoke directly to it. Did he not? Spoke to it and said, no. He said, by his stripes, I am healed. He said, you have no right to affect my body. Why? Why? Because I've been bought and paid for. That's right. I am property of his majesty. Amen. And by, he watched it happen. It fell off his face into the sink. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody says, yeah, you're talking about it. No, I'm not. I'll bring him here and have him tell you about it. Why? Because that's specific. When you pray, pray specifically. Amen. Speak to the infirmity. Amen. Right? Usually when I go to the hospital, pray for your loved ones. Uh, we were just there last week. Why do I pray? I usually say this. God, I'm asking that you touch every ligament, every fiber, every vessel, every organ within this body to work under the prescribed order that you created it to function. That's specific. Right? Why? Because the Word gives that authority. Right? Mm, good stuff. Good stuff. Hmm. When you ask Jesus to move into your physical pain and distress, guess what? And guide you away from it, through it, it's his hands. You remain open to his plan. Amen. And you step out of yours. Amen. But you're open to his. That's one reason things, certain things, I don't have all the answers, nobody in this room does. But why do certain things happen? Because it keeps you in the plan. Right? Well, that's good stuff. Number four. Jesus heals emotional wounds. Anybody ever had emotional wounds? Is that represented in this place? I told you this would touch everybody. Just those four things have probably hit everybody in this room. Yes. And we're not even done. I got one more after that. Right? He heals emotional wounds. This is a big one. Because we're all emotional people. Right? They hurt me in the feelers. Quit letting them feel them. <laughs> right? No stranger to anguish and wounds. Jesus was not. He can handle your lowest and darkest emotion. Somebody says, I don't have any. You're lying. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. Through prayer and faith, we have access to freedom, wisdom, and deliverance. And prayer positions your heart toward Jesus and away from your overwhelming issue. Right? Say yes. Yes. Guess what? Peter, in fact, Peter, uh, who knew Jesus well, 
He instructs us today to cast your anxiety on him. Right? I believe 1 Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care on him for he careth for you. Right? Hmm. Why? And if you're thinking this was just easy for Peter to say or do, it wasn't. But he knew it was a certainty. Right? Peter was one, you got to remember, Peter was one of little faith. He was not a giant of the faith. Peter was attitudinal. Let's just put it where, right, Jerry? Yes, sir. He had an attitude problem. Right? So you know his faith was probably subpar at best. But yet it came out of his lips, casting all your care on him. Because he cares for you. Hmm. He was also the one to deny his association with Christ three times. Yet he became a primary ambassador of his power to heal. Amen. Isn't it amazing how God works? Yes. It is. When you open your heart to Jesus, you can come in and tend to your sleeplessness. Your anger, bitterness, frustration, fear, depression, anxiety, whatever the case may be. Because somebody fits in there somewhere. He can clear the clouds of confusion and direct and order your steps. Yes? Say yes. yes. The more we meditate, the more we pray on his promises and his power, the more you can confess the need for him. What are you talking about? I can't do this without you. Amen. That's right. Amen. I can't breathe another breath without you. That's right. Life is useless without you. I can go without the best of life. I can go with a normal house. I can go with a car that just gets me where I'm going. I don't have to have the finest of everything. I can settle on those things. But one thing I do know is I cannot go without you. Amen. Amen. Right? That's good stuff. Yes, it is. His strength is made perfect in your weakness. Where are we weak at most of the time? Emotions. Mm -hmm. That's why people prey on your emotions. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Your sympathy. Mm -hmm. Your kindness. But also, it can backfire. Right? It can. I tell people all the time, don't take my kindness as a weakness. Because you kick a dog so many times, it's going to bite back. Yeah. Right? What do you, why'd you say that? It's emotional wounds. Mm -hmm. Yes? Now, I can honestly say, you've heard me say this before, it is true, and most people that know me will tell you this. You can do or say anything you want about me. I really don't care. I'm going to blow you off and go on about my business. Do whatever i got to do. But you attack my family, you That's attack right. my church, you attack you all. God himself is the only person going to help. <laughs> right? That's right? Why? Those are emotions. Mm -hmm. I told you this would hit everybody in this room. Right? Emotional, wound, emotional wounds are probably the hardest ones to come back from. Did you know that? They are. Because they're deep. They're deep. Hmm. But he can do that. Even today, tonight, Jesus can guide us to reach out for help, release our grip of others or circumstances. Don't let other... Don't let other people dictate your happiness. Because they can't. 
unless you let them. Yeah. Right? You've probably heard me say this. Yeah. People can only do what you allow them to do. Mm -hmm. Alright? It's that simple. Now, we just got to have the faith that his way is the best way. Amen. Not my way. Not my will, but thine be done. That's his own words. Mm -hmm. How, listen, if Jesus himself can say, not my will, but thine be done. How much more should you and I emphatically be praying that same prayer? Amen. Amen. Right? Yeah. Not my will, not my desire, but God keep me in your perfect will. And that's good stuff. Amen. Number five. Jesus heals hopelessness. There's the fifth one. Loneliness. Sickness of sin. Physical ailments. Emotional wounds. And hopelessness. Now, raise your hand. Everybody in this room that hit in one of those categories, raise your hand. That's everybody. Oh. <laughs> That's every. I told you. This message would hit everybody in this house. Yes, because it's giving you the solution. It's giving you the antidote. It's giving you the reprieve, the answer. Right? Mm -hmm. Jesus heals hopelessness. Jesus consistently demonstrates that he is the hope that transcends through time and all the struggles of our mind, our body, our will, and our soul. And when he heals, he asks that we go and we share this good news with other people. Yes? Yeah. Matthew 7, 22. Is that up there? Uh, it's Luke's up there. Oh, that'll work. Oh, yeah, it's Luke. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it's Luke. <laughs> I got new glasses. They're... It's all right. It's okay, Pastor. Yeah. And I ain't figured it out yet. He hasn't figured them out. So depending on how I look down, bear with me. I'm 50 now. <laughs> then Jesus answered and said to them, Go your way and tell John. Hear that? Tell John what things ye have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the leopards are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. Amen. There you go, right there. Are you feeling isolated, wounded, ashamed, or physically ill? I pose that question to this body here tonight. Bring it to Jesus. Bring it to Jesus. And do it now. You don't have to wait. Did you know that you don't have to wait to heaven? You can get a down payment of his power and his grace and anointing sitting right in this pew. Amen. Amen. Did you know that? Yeah, you can. Think about it. There's nothing he hasn't experienced. Nothing that he doesn't already understand. Nothing he cannot do. But nothing he won't do. For his people. Because, let's put it this way, if he was willing to go the way of the cross, where the anguish, the pain, the heartache, the horror, he knew the road he was going. He knew what he had to do. He knew what his destiny was. But yet he did it. Why would he do it all? Why would he face it if he wasn't going to honor it? Amen. Ooh, that's straight from heaven. That's straight from heaven. Why would he do it if he wasn't going to honor it? I took, listen, while you're holding on to this issue, this ailment, whatever, when he said, I've already took your whipping for you. I've already took your beating for you. I've already took the price of sin for you. Why are you carrying it? 
Why are you holding on to it when I've already done it for you? Mm, that's good stuff, right? But he is always working all things out for good. Why? Whose hope? Hope is in him. The Bible says, for we have hope in God. I believe that you do or you wouldn't even be here. Right? Right, so it's time that we start exercising that hope. Right? Good. Here's my thing. Jesus, if you said it, then I know you'll do it. Amen. Right? If you said it, if it's there, I know it's absolute. You'll do it. Right? I know what it's like when I was first starting out in life and had my own apartment for the first time. I know what it's like to go into the kitchen and there's nothing there in the cap in the cupboard. And I wonder, how am I going to eat tonight? Forget about tonight. How am I going to eat tomorrow? I know what that's like. I know what it's like to know I have to go to work and I only got this much gas to last me the rest of the week. Right? How can it gives me the right to say I know it's an absolution? Because I've been through it. That's why. And I'm not the only one. Ever, probably every adult in here has been there at one point in time. Yes. Right? But here's the thing that I can stand before you and decree to everybody here. I've faced those situations, but I have never, ever been forsaken. Amen. Amen. Even though I may have faced that, Jerry, I never went without. Right? Somehow I ate. Somehow gas got in my car. Right? Heard a story of one time of a lady that did this. She left a revival. They were in revival all week long. She had to go to work. She lived like 40 miles away from the church or whatever. And here's what happened. Her car ran out of gas. On the side of the road. This is documented. I, if you want to know where it's at, I'll tell you. Got out of the car. She had the authority to do this, Jerry. Everybody else might have thought this woman is a lunatic. She's nuts. But do you know it had to be a woman because a guy wouldn't do this. You know this and I know this. Come on now. As a man, we would not have done this. If you notice all through the Bible where miraculous things, I have to admit, God, I can't believe I've got to admit this. Why are you doing this to me? Every time you see something move handedly, generally it was a woman. The truth is, and it's a sad state of affairs, <laughs> but it is the truth that the bedrock backbone of the church are the women. Yeah. Now, I'm not, I mean everywhere, not just here. Anywhere you go, that's what you're going to find. Why? Because it's women... Women know how to pray. And I'll be honest with you. If I need something, I want some dynamic, Holy Ghost-filled woman Amen. praying for me. Amen. Because I know they know how to do it. Right? That's right. Because my, uh, whatever they're dealing with, touch them more. <laughs> That's what we would do. No, not a woman. Woman got, devil, get out of here. You ain't got no right in this situation. I know for a fact because I was my mama. This woman I'm talking about, she got out of the car, Jerry, went back to the gas tank and said, God, if you can feed a man of God a sandwich in the middle of a famine by ravens, you can take care of me to make it home in this car right here tonight. God, 
if you can touch the lame, if you can open blinded eyes, God, if you can raise the dead, you can get my car and me back home here tonight. This car's on empty. She gets back in, turns the key, and drives 40 more miles home with nothing in her tank. Don't tell me God cannot sustain you. Hallelujah. Right? Because that's hopeless. When you're stuck somewhere, you're hopeless. When you think you can't get there, it's hopeless. When you think nobody cares, it's hopeless. When you think you're going to die, it's hopeless. When the church member that all the time, that when they turn around and tell you they love you one minute and they stab you with the other hand the second you turn around, that's hopeless. That's right. It's a hopeless situation. Right? But guess what? Jesus heals hopelessness. That's right. Amen. Amen. Has anybody in here ever felt that way? Yeah. Hmm. When life becomes the very deep waters, Isaiah 43, 2 says it best. When thou passest through the waters, notice the terminology here. Through. That means you ain't stuck. That means you ain't going to drown. That means it's not permanent. It's not a destination. When you pass through the water, I'll be with thee. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. What an absolute promise. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Isaiah said it best. He promised to walk with us through. This obstacle, this battle, this war that's going on spiritually, and it comes against you. When all hell seems to be coming your way, you're passing through it. There's a reason for it. You learn from it, and you go on. Right? Mm. But you can have hope that he sees glory even when there's death. Right. Death may be imminent. It may be a certainty. He makes everything new and fills each day with new mercy. Mm. That's good stuff right there. As he refines us through fire, you and I can still have hope today because it's a new day. When you go home tonight, guess what? You don't have to worry about what happened to the day because tomorrow's a new one. Amen. Right? Amen. And it's designed by him. And guess what? Even though we ain't got to tomorrow yet, it's already shining. Amen. It's already bright. It's already full of glory and promise. Because it's his promise. Romans 15, 4, I'm closing with this. Romans 15, 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Amen. Everything that I give you tonight touches every life in this building. Why? Because it reassures us of an absolution. That when I'm weak, when I fail, when I falter, when I don't think I can take another step, your grace is sufficient unto me. Amen. Right? Amen. And you are made strong in my weakness. Do you agree with that? Yes. Amen. Amen. Did you get anything out of that? Amen. Amen. Good word, Pastor. All is well? Yes. Are you blessed and highly favored? Amen. Amen. Are you encouraged? Amen. Amen.
Yeah. Uh, what was I gonna tell you? Oh yeah, as you go in and out the building over the next probably several weeks, remember there's stuff going on out there because <laughs> judging by the way I walked out there today, that stuff's probably not gonna fall till March. So it's kind of hard to move the dirt right now because it's concrete, right? So be aware that there is clumps of dirt out there. Watch out, don't fall. Cat. Don't. <laughs> but that should get back to normal probably around March or so. Because <laughs> I, I ain't going out there again unless I have to. It's too cold. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, no problem. It's it's God's house, right? Would you have done it? There's the answer, right? Yes. One mind, one accord, one body. Many members, one body, right? Amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Good. All hearts and minds clear. Is your heart and mind clear? Is yours? Amen. Everybody back there, is your heart and mind clear? Yes. Mary, I dread to ask you this. <laughs> I'm not saying a word. Very <laughs> <Mary>, good. <laughs> Amen. Stand your feet, please. That's been a good week in the house of the Lord. Have you all agree with that? Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for your presence here tonight. Lord, I thank you for each and every individual that came out tonight, God, to be a part of the process that you have designed to be. Father, to come and assemble together in your presence. Father, thank you for the word that went out to encourage, to strengthen, and to promote God, your saving grace, your healing power, and your restoration. Father, help us to take these truths and apply it to our own lives. God, and help us on this journey to make heaven our home. Be with each and every individual tonight as they leave this place to their respective places until we meet again in this house or we meet in that great day of the resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be blessed.